Before we go on with uh, arrays, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, time, especially let's talk about the year 19,100. That's a very famous year. Uh, let's see what Perl has to say about uh, time. And this is the row as Perl provides uh, us. Actually, there are better solutions for today, but uh, let me show you the, the row the way of so solving the, the time issues. So Perl has the fi function called time, and it will, if you call it, it will return a scalar value, which is a could today it's a 10-digit long number. This is uh, the, the seconds elapsed since uh, the what we call epoch, which is uh, the 1st of January on uh, 1970 on most of the operating systems. You can use this uh, number to be a parameter of the local time function. So the, the dollar $t that we got here it can be a parameter of the local time function. And if you assign it to $x, $x will hold a string like this. So it's a nicely formatted uh, string, or sort of nicely formatted string, a, a human uh, readable way of describing this se very second. Actually, you don't even have to provide uh, the seconds to local time. You can call it just without any value, and it will automatically fetch the current time using time and do the same. So you don't have to do the, the, the time yourself. The reason it's good that you can provide um, a value to local time is then you can provide any number there. So you can, for example, say time minus this number, which is just the number of seconds in a regular year. And um, then you could also do, uh, for example, if you run your script, you can always call the time function and save that timestamp in some file. And then later on, in a separate process, you can, for creating, let's say, reports, you can calculate the, the nicer looking date from these uh, timestamps. So that's the reason it can be used. But then let's see what happens if you call this local time with the same dollar $t as above here, but this time we assign it to an array. So if you look in the array, you will notice that it will have a series of numbers like this. So 53, 15, 14. What are these numbers? So if you compare these numbers with this date, you will see that 53 is the seconds, 15 is the minutes, 14 is the hours, and so on. This expression uh, helps us understand what are the various fields. So the first one is the second, uh, is the seconds, then minutes, then hours, then months, days. So it's the which day in the months from 1 to 31 or whatever. Uh, mo months, year, weekday, year day, so which day out of the 365, and is daylight saving time, whether daylight saving time is on in your computer. So if you look at the, the, the numbers, the months, the, the months field here can be between 0 and 11. So January would be 0 and November, December would be 11. It's because they are computers. Minutes are between 0 and 59. Again, that sounds okay. Seconds are between 0 and 60. That's because normally it would be it would be between zero and fifty nine, but there is a year every I think four hundred years, uh, where you have an elapsed uh, an additional second. So Perl is ready for that, and the year and that's the interesting thing is the year is the actual year that you normally you would write down, minus one thousand nine hundred. So what happens is that. Uh, when people saw this uh, number in 1998, let's say, they saw a number 98, so they wanted to print out 1098. So what they did is they put in quotes 19 and the year value. And that worked for them, it printed out 1098. And it worked even in 99. But when they arrived to the year of 2000, then 2000 minus 1900, this, would give them 100. So this string turned to be 19100, exactly the year of 19100. 
That's because they haven't read the documentation that explicitly says the year should be displayed 1900 plus the year number that you get here. So this is the famous uh, bug 2000 or whatever it's called that uh, people managed to put in their code because they were sort of lazy and uh, wrote this way instead of what uh, the documentation said. There is also a function called GM time compared to local time which works uh, the same way except that it will provide you the date in uh, Greenwich Mean Time or UTC. What uh, normally should work is that the clock, there is a hardware clock in your computer, that should work according to the UTC, which is more, more or less uh, Greenwich uh, Mean Time, so it's just a different name for it, let's say. And um, then your operating system, whether it's Windows or Linux, should be configured to know in which time zone are you in and whether the daylight ta saving time is on in your system and then based on that the, it will be able to calculate so time would return you the number based on the hardware clock and local time and GM time would or local time right local time would include the, in the computation the, the time zone and the uh, the they, they like saving time, while GM time would just generate the same string, uh, the same string according to the what's in the UTC in Greenwich. So that's about time, but we sort of stepped over this part. The strange thing that local time sometimes returns you a string with uh, a date stamp and sometimes it returns a, a list of values and it depends on what is the left on the left hand side of the assignment so the local time function that's this similar to the gm time function is aware of what it's being what it's expected for it from it and this is something that's relatively different from other programming languages and we'll talk about this what we call context in the next chapters